session, we learned about the architecture of the Trader API and how it achieves the latency that it does. What are we going to do today? So today we want to talk a bit about the Trader API SDKs that we offer. And basically to have a good user experience, we want to provide these hooks and language bindings for developers and people that want to create trading bots to be able to easily integrate the trade API usage into their application. So we have SDKs in three languages, in Go, Python, and TypeScript. And today we're going to cover the how we install each of these SDKs and how we're going to use them after that. That's cool. Can you show me an example? Yeah. So to get started, let me share my screen. And then what we're going to get started is with the Blockstrap documentation. So this is available at docs.blockstrap.com. And then if you scroll through the, the sections, you'll come down here to the Trader API section, and then you'll see instructions in the quick start for each of the SDKs. So we're going to have pages for each of the Go, Python, and TypeScript SDKs here. So to get started, let's try uh, the Go SDK. So I'm going to copy this line. And I have an empty project set up right here. Uh, essentially, it's just a go mod and main.go file. And if you open up this project, it's, it's just empty for this purpose. So to get started, let's install the go SDK. OK, so the installation is completed here. And then now we'll be able to do whatever we want with the go SDK in our project. So as an example, I uh, have some lines copied here. we'll be able to import the, our module to create a new client to the Trader API. So as you can see, installation here for Go is very much like any other Go module. Very simple, just uh, include it, import it, and you'll be able to use it. Now, let's take a look at the Python SDK next. And once again, we just have a simple project here with a just a main.py uh, and the requirements file. And I've also created a empty virtual environment for this specific demo. So once again, I'll show you in here that uh, I've included the main dependency that needs to be installed for the Python SDK. This is also just available in the, uh, the, the documentation under the Python SDK. So we see here, here's the main uh, thing that needs to be installed. So if we just do a quick installation, Uh, so now have installed the the uh, Solana Trader API SDK for Python, and then we can now use the relevant functions that we need in uh, the main.py. So once again, I have a couple of lines that I've copied, just as an example. And here we've just uh, you know loaded the the connection to the Trader API here, and then from then on, we can do whatever we want uh, within the SDK. Let's get into the first function. Sounds good. So let's do this demo with the Go uh, SDK. So right here, we've initialized the client uh, that connects to the Trader API from the SDK hook. And you'll see here that we wrote a new gRPC client. The Trader API has multiple interfaces. There's gRPC, HTTP, and WebSockets. You can use any of them. Uh, main thing is that HTTP doesn't support streaming since it's not a streaming protocol. But for the purpose of these examples, they're effectively the, the same function signatures. So they're pretty replaceable here. So yeah, let's demonstrate how to do this. Uh, we'll start by getting the order books uh, for a particular uh, market. So the way you can get into the specifics of how this should look is if you go to the documentation again, and scroll through this uh, API endpoint section, you'll see that we've sectioned our API into all these different endpoints. If we get in deep here, uh, let's say the order books, um, essentially what this endpoint is meant for is to show you all the bids and asks for a particular marketplace. And in, over here in the request examples, you can see samples of how to do this uh, in HTTP or like a normal WebSocket client. And then there are examples here for the SDK hooks too. Here's the Go one. It's essentially just uh, you get the provider and you call dot get order book on it. Um, so let's uh, do the same thing in our example. Um, yeah, I have it copied over here. 
So we're just going to uh, do what was showing the documentation there. Uh, so yeah, simple call. We're going to get the, the soul slash USDC market. And we're going to just get 10 entries of the best 10 uh, bids and asks for this market. There's usually just hundreds of them, and you often don't need all of them, so you might find it useful to limit it at times. And all we're going to do with this output is just print it out. So now that we have this, let's run this function and see how it works. Okay, cool. So what you actually see here is that we hit one of our error blocks, and it says that the auth header cannot be empty. So essentially what this refers to is you need to have an account with Bloxo and an authorization header in order to use the Trader API in general. And you, there's a section in the introduction here on authorization headers. So the short version is you need to create an account uh, if you don't have one already. Uh, and uh, once you're in there, you'll be able to get your authorization details. So let me just show you how to do that real quick. Uh, this is the Bloxo portal. So just portal.bloxo.com. And then, you know, I created an account just for testing here, but once you log in, um, so yeah, I guess if you don't have one, you go through the sign up flow and you just go to the account button up here in order to get your credentials. Uh, since I didn't want to leak my credentials, I've just kind of replaced the auth header here, but I have a value copied uh, somewhere else for this purpose. So yeah, in order to do this, we need to include our auth header as an environment variable while we run the script. So if you were do, to do this from like the um, uh, like command line, you'd, you'd do something like like uh, auth header equals uh, whatever your auth header is, and then like uh, go run main go something like that. Um, and yeah, this this works, but uh, obviously this isn't a properly formatted auth header. So let me just do the same thing in GoLand here. Essentially, I'll do uh, be able to configure an environment variable. We we'll just call it auth header. And then let me just copy in the auth header that I currently use for testing. And okay. the way that you're the way that you're putting in the auth header is that specific to this IDE, like GoLand? Yeah, this is how you would uh, specify an environment variable in GoLand. Um, yeah, typically, otherwise, you know, in whatever other kind of deployment environment, you'd do something like this, where you'd like specify the auth header or load some config depending on however your like, kind of operations team wants to handle this kind of credentials. Um, yeah, it's probably a good idea to keep your auth header secret since it's like fairly sensitive information, which is why I'm not showing mine explicitly right here. Right. So yeah, now that we have this information, let's run it again. And then, yeah, so this is the output, right? So we have the marketplace that we're looking for, uh, so USDC. And you can see here that we just have a list of bids and asks. Uh, you can see that if you get as you get close to the center, these are the two bids and asks that are closest to each other, right? Um, if they ever intersect, that's when like a, a trade is made. And this is pretty close to like what most websites would tell you is the current exchange rate for Seoul and USD. Uh, it's about $33 and some cents at the time of this uh, recording. Uh, so yeah, now that we have the order book, let's also uh, get it in a stream format. So one of the really cool things that uh, the Trader Europe can do for you is that it can tell you every time the order book changes. So every time you, you know, someone in the world places a bid or asks, uh, we can push an update out over the the trading API, and then your client, uh, the SDK, can hook into this to produce an update. So the main way this works, uh, I'll just again copy over my sample. So we can kind of compare and contrast these two. We have a function here that's you know instead of get order book, we have get order book stream, and again this is documented in the uh, documentation. If we just go to the uh, okay, so. You see here, there's like the market API and then trade API, and there's also API streams. And we can look at the order book streams, and this one will have the, the details I'm going to show you here. So yeah, uh, basically, we're going to call the same thing. And the order book stream uh, supports multiple order books if you want to make a subscription for multiple different marketplaces. And this is why it's just an array here. But we're going to do just the sole USDC market again. And yeah, this is kind of just the, the, the way the API or SDK exposes. We provide a function back that if you call repeatedly, uh, it'll just 
continue giving you updates as they come in from Trading API. So what this uh, section of this example is going to do is we're going to you know get the order book stream, and every time we get an update, we'll just print it out to the the terminal, and we'll just do this forever until we stop the program. So let's see it again. Okay, uh, and you can kind of see. Uh, okay, I'm just going to stop it here. It's a uh, it's a little bit hard to read here, but let's yeah let's okay. So here are two lines, right? You can see that we have a slot number for each update, and then these are the order book. Uh, this is the order book content itself. Uh, I can make this a little bit nicer to, to see if we just maybe we'll just print out another line so we get a separation between each of them, so we can see the distinct updates. Okay, uh, so yeah, you can see each of these is a new update. Um, something that is kind of, you might notice from this result right here is that the slot number is the same for some updates, which is like looks like it's duplicate data, but this is actually not the case. So yeah, I think this is actually a good example up here. You can see that these two slots, despite having the same slot number, the final ask is different for each of them. And the reason for this is that the way the trade API works is that we we produce these updates before the entirety of the block is processed. So basically, as soon as each transaction in the block gets executed, we push these updates out as quickly as possible. So you can get this result several hundred milliseconds faster than if you waited for the entire block to complete processing. So, so this there's is, a big you know, speed advantage. Yeah, there's a there's a huge speed advantage from this. So like even though like the slot information is like you know the block that's getting executed in order to produce this, the we will produce like each time there's a change within a single block, we might will produce an update for each different update. So we'll emit an update from Trade API for every single transaction that, that interacts with this order book. And that's where the, the speed, one of the speed advantages we have comes in. Um, so yeah, the thing is like with some of the filtering, you might not, the, these two lines, for example, look identical, but that's just because of the filtering that we did with like the, the limit 10 here. If we saw the entirety of the order book, there would always be a difference in it. Um, so yeah, this is the order book stream. We can also show just one more. Uh, so order books is for, you know, serum kind of like the more order book, uh, kind of format for how you do trades. Uh, another common one is, uh, AMMs. So let me just get the sample I, other sample I have copied. So the thing that you might be most interested in when you're doing trading on an AMM, uh, is the is the reserves. So to get a sense of kind of like what the available liquidity is of a particular pool and uh, you know how that how those numbers keep updating, we also have a function called get reserve stream, which will produce this information. So yeah, again, you know, same general function signatures. Uh, you see it's just get reserves compared to get order books. And you know, this stream will produce reserves information. So we can delete the order book uh, the order book example here and just look at the reserves. Uh, the it's a fairly simple uh, call again. We just specify which AMM project we want to get the reserve information from. For this case, it's Radium, and you know once we run it, okay, we'll just stop here. We can see that this is uh, updating. It shows us all the kind of changes in liquidity for the tokens uh, for for this particular pool in Radium. So if you look a bit closer at this, you can see it's Sol, and then this is the USDC token address. So this is the Sol USDC pool in Radium, uh, and you know this is how the reserve information changes between like the yeah the, the relationship between these two changes uh, over time as other people do swaps and and you know stuff like that. It's not giving us quite as much data as the last one. As yeah, last and that's the. That's due to the difference in like what an AMM is compared to what a order book is, right? An order book is a bunch of bids and asks. So people are being like, I want to sell um, or buy X number of soul, or I want to, you know, I want to sell 10 soul, or I want to buy 10 USDC. But this one is a uh, an AMM, right? So there's a whole liquidity pool and a curve. And it just shows you like how much of the reserves are above each of them. And from this, you can kind of compute your quote information and how much the swap is actually going to cost you. Kevin, can you get into the differences between Go, Python, and TypeScript and 
why someone would want to use one versus the other? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, there are a lot of programming languages out there, right? And the when it comes down to the specifics of our SDKs, for example, there's not a ton different. Um, I mean, each language looks a bit different and has fairly different performance characteristics. But in terms of integration, you shouldn't expect to have too much difficulty uh, on any of like for any of the languages. In in general, you know, a lot of this kind of depends on what you need to do and what the expertise of you or your engineering team might be. Uh, just I guess some common differences. Python and TypeScript are both interpreted languages and not compiled ones. So Go has a bit of a speed advantage in that front. In general, I'd say Go is a very popular language in the blockchain space as a whole. It tends to be very performant. Um, I personally like writing it a lot and the, the syntax is like kind of, you have good control over things without getting too much into the, you know, without having to like manually manage memory and all of that. Um, another, I guess, common language that we haven't talked about here, but is very popular in the Solana space is Rust. And that one is also a compiled language. It's known to be very like safe and useful, uh, but that's not something we provide an SDK for right now. Python, I'd say, is the language that's kind of easiest to get into as like a new programmer if you uh, are just you know trying to learn programming in general and want to integrate with SDK as part of how you're learning programming. It's also you know still very extensible to like larger scale you know, like uh, you know data processing and a lot of like really. Uh, really like intense AI work and like the AI and ML type libraries are in Python are very like well supported there. And then finally, TypeScript is uh, the, the most important thing I'd say about TypeScript is, is that it's a language that runs in your browser. So if you intend to build an application that uses the Trader API and you want to build it entirely as a web application with that runs within the user's browser, you would do that in TypeScript. It also has the advantage of in the Solana ecosystem specifically, a lot of other programs, um, like a lot of other, like the, for example, like Serum, uh, Radium and other like Solana projects, they often will also provide a SDK in TypeScript as well. So if you need to interrupt between those programs and the Solana, the, the trading API, uh, you know, in one project, TypeScript might be the easiest option for you there. Right. But if it was a if it was a speed game, you would say that Go would be the one to go with. Uh, out of SDKs we support, Go is the, the one to go for if you care about purely that kind of CPU speed. Interesting. So Kevin, thanks for explaining all this stuff to me. Um, what do you think is in store for us for the next lesson? Yeah, totally. Always happy to talk about this uh, trade API and all its features. Uh, next time, we're going to take a look at creating uh, transactions yourself. So if you want to create a swap or place an order, uh, we'll cover that in the next lesson. Cool. I'm excited.